Hey guys, welcome to my 32 week bump date. Baby, this week is the size of a jacama. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I don't even know what that is, but that's the size. About four pounds, so she's getting big. Also, this week with baby, let's see. She's storing iron. Her lungs are forming and she's practicing breathing. And her uterus and ovaries are in place and she has all the eggs that she'll ever have. So, just kind of bulking up it sounds like. As for me, I'm doing okay. Uh, about as expected. Getting towards the end here, I have eight or less weeks to go until baby girl comes. So about what, two months? So we're in crunch time now. My back has been, it has, I have my good and bad days. Uh, sometimes I can go all day and not really have back problems and other days I just find that my back is bothering me more. Still don't really need the belly band except for in the evenings after I put the boys to bed and I'm just lounging on the couch. I do put it on every evening and it does seem to help. I got a new belly band. I don't know if I showed you guys on the vlog or not. I found it on Amazon. I'll show you guys. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's a different design than the one that I used to have. It has more of a like pad where the belly, where it like hugs the belly, and then it just wraps around you and Velcros. I really like it. Um, my other one had a lot of extra straps that went like over top the belly, and that really hurt. Um, like, because I, I still have this really tender spot like right under my left ribs and so I don't like to put anything on that area to put more pressure on it and so I like this one because it's just underneath the belly and it lifts up so that's been really helpful I just found that on Amazon I don't know what it's called but it does fine it does the job heartburn um, has been fine except for evenings I usually have to take Tums at least once, sometimes twice before I go to bed. If I don't take Tums and I lay down, then I have heartburn so bad. So I definitely am taking it probably about once a day, if not twice. Headaches I really haven't had, which has been really nice. I have felt a little out of breath here and there. I was feeling good last week. It felt like I could breathe again, and now this week I'm back to like, <sighs> you know. Um, I'm definitely feeling tired a lot, not a lot of energy. I'm not sleeping well at night. I get up at least once, if not two or three times a night to go pee. It's definitely increased this week. I get up a ton to pee. I'm always peeing. It's definitely increased. I got the worst Charlie horse this morning and I haven't had those in weeks and I got one this morning. Oh, it hurts so bad. But other than that, my legs have been fine. We have been preparing more for baby girl to come. My mom and I went and bought some more clothes for her. We got pink sheets for our bassinet and our uh, changing pad cover. So bringing a little bit of pink in here and there. I still need to buy like a ton of stuff for the nursery, but I still have time. My husband and I have been looking at minivans because we need to upgrade my car. It's not big enough for three kids. So we're planning this weekend to go and buy a minivan. So stay tuned to my other vlogs. I'm sure I'll vlog that, but we are doing that to get ready for her. I had to go check the car seat to make sure it wasn't expired. Thankfully, our infant car seat is good for seven years. We've only had it for four years. So that's nice. You don't have to get another one of that. I did go ahead and order a new breast pump. I get a free one through my insurance with every pregnancy. And not that I need a new one, like my old one still works, but some of the parts like were missing and just getting old. And if I'm gonna get a free one, like might as well take advantage of that. So I like ordered it and got it in less than a week. It was so fast. So I got it, I just do the Spectra. 
I think it's the S2. I would do the S1, but my insurance doesn't cover the whole thing, so I'd have to pay extra for it, and that's just silly to me. The difference is the S2, which is the pink one, you have to plug it into an outlet to use it. The S1, you can use it on batteries. You can like pour, like it's portable, and you can take it around everywhere. So I'm just stuck to a wall, but whatever. I save money. So I did get that. So slowly but surely, I was like going through my breastfeeding supplies. I've got like tons of pads. I think I need more like milk bags and stuff like that. I have started to look into natural ways of like inducing labor just because I really want this baby to come early before the due date. Um, in March would be preferable. So I've been looking at different things that you can do. A lot of things people claim help but don't really, like eating dates, eating pineapple or pineapple cores, just like different things you can eat. I guess a lot of those things will help like soften the cervix but they won't necessarily like induce labor. The only things I've really seen are walking, squats, maybe um, nipple stimulation, uh, sex, I guess the sperm help induce labor, I don't know. So I'm definitely going to be trying some of those things and see. Um, if you don't know, with my previous two pregnancies, I, both of them, I went over past my due date. My first, I had to be induced because I went 41 weeks. And then my second, I was scheduled to be induced and then he came like 40 weeks and five days or something. So I really would like to go early with this one. I'm tired of being pregnant and I really want to put as much time between this baby's due date, birthday, and uh, my oldest son's birthday. My oldest son, his birthday is April 11th. This baby's due date is April 4th. So if I could have her a couple weeks early in March, like that would be great. Obviously I'm not gonna be starting any like techniques until I'm at least 37 weeks. That is technically full term. So we'll just see how it goes. I have been feeling a ton of Braxton Hicks as the week goes on. I feel them more and more. And that is encouraging to me because in my previous two pregnancies, I never really got Braxton Hicks. I think Maybe I did at the very, very end with my second pregnancy. Definitely didn't get them in my first. But ever since like 20 or so weeks, I've been getting Braxton Hicks here and there with baby girl. And lately they've been more like just occurring more, not like, not like one after another after another, but like maybe I'll have like two a day or something like that. So, that's encouraging that like my body is starting to prepare for it. I've also leaked a little bit of colostrum, so that's good. I've never had problems with like having milk in the beginning at least with my first, I think I breastfed him exclusively for like six months and then basically uh, didn't go much longer than that. I just like couldn't keep up with the supply. And then with my second, I think I went a little bit longer, maybe it was seven or eight months, but then, like I haven't made it to a year with both. I don't know how I'll do with baby girl, but you know, at least there's formula out there, so that's really nice. I have my next doctor's appointment in less than a week. Today is Thursday, I have it on a Monday, so just a couple days. So I'm excited for that, although it's going to be very disappointing because they're, it's gonna take like five minutes. They're gonna check my bundle height, they're gonna take the heartbeat and that's gonna be it. And I'm pretty sure after this appointment, I start going every two weeks. So they're not gonna be checking me to see if I'm dilated or anything like that. I'm not far along enough yet, but I know what that is coming towards the end. So that I'll be curious to know just like how I'm doing once that time comes. Baby girl has been kicking a ton. She gets hiccups several times a day, all the time. I feel her super low still. So I definitely think she's head down. I think she's, I've never had a problem with that with any of my pregnancies. So I think she's facing the way she's supposed to. I guess I'll get an update on Monday when I go to my doctor's appointment. But she moves a ton, especially in the evenings when I'm sitting and the boys are in bed. She moves a ton. Her movements are starting to get a little bit painful because she's just getting stronger and bigger and running out of room. 
she kicks my bladder a lot and she like kicks my ribs a lot too so she is very mobile like i said in the last vlog i think we've settled on a first name we're still debating the middle name though so i don't have anything new to share with that next week i am planning on taking my last trip before i uh, no longer travel um, because it'll be too close to baby's due date. So I'm taking my kids to Florida to go visit my grandma and then we're gonna do one day in Disney. So hopefully walking around the parks for a full day doesn't like set me off or put me in labor or anything. I'll just be what, 33 weeks. So it won't, I guess it won't be that close, but definitely getting there. So, uh, Stay tuned for that. I'm sure I'll put out a vlog about that and how all that goes. I'm very much looking forward to the warmer weather though. It's been a little chilly here in February in Ohio. I think this week I've just kind of hit my I'm over this phase. I hit this every pregnancy. Well, my first one actually, I felt like I could be pregnant forever. I actually didn't want to have him because I was just loving being pregnant. With my second pregnancy, it took me a while, but then at the end, I was like in pain and it just, I was just tired of it. And so this pregnancy, I think this is probably the earliest I've ever felt like just done with it all. Cause what, I'm 32 weeks, seems a little early, but I just keep thinking to myself, like I want my body back. I want to not be in pain all the time. I want to be able to like have the occasional drink just different stuff like that, not be exhausted. I mean, I, I will be tired because I'm gonna have a newborn and be up all the time, but just hopefully get some of my energy back, not have this huge bump that's hard to bend over and hard to get in and out of the car. Like, I'm just over it. I feel like I've been pregnant forever since, what, July? And I'm tired of it. <laughs> So I'm at that phase where I'm just done and huge and how can I possibly get bigger but it's gonna happen. So yeah, I'm definitely getting tired of this uh, pregnancy, ready to meet baby girl, ready to have my body back somewhat. I mean, I'm gonna be breastfeeding, so there's that. And then of course there's like the recovery of uh, postpartum and all that not looking forward to that but just uh, be able to lay on my stomach if I want to or be able to bend over and not like die <laughs> or like be able to breathe <laughs> so I'm sure if you've been in this spot before you can totally understand where I'm coming from but yeah this week it's definitely just like tired of being pregnant <laughs> basically how I feel. I'm still dealing with the nose tingling thing that happens every day. It's very annoying. I swear I sneeze all the time <laughs> and it's really annoying. I don't know, the nose congestion. I'm tired of that too. I'll be glad when that goes away as well. And the peeing all the time. I'll be glad when I can do that and to be able to eat whatever I want to eat. I'll be happy for that too. My number one meal that I always have and I always look forward to after I have a baby is Subway because I love Subway so much. You're not supposed to eat meats. I do eat deli meats here and there, but not Subway because they're like laid out and just like sitting out like all day. But as soon as I have that baby, that's like the number one meal I ask for is Subway. So I'm so excited for that. I can't wait to have my Subway sandwich again. It's been so long and just be able to eat what I want to eat. I'm very excited for that. This week, interestingly, I've started to get a little bit nauseous again. It's just in the evenings, just like how it was uh, back in the beginning. Usually around dinner time, I find I don't want to eat. Uh, in my previous two pregnancies, I never got nauseous after it went away in the beginning. And this one, it's kind of come back. It's hit and miss, it doesn't always happen, but I do find myself wanting to skip dinner a lot in the evenings. And then I usually won't eat until like eight or nine. And then um, usually not a lot of things sound good to me. I've been snacking here and there. My cravings have been banana bread. Oh, I just can't get enough of like any kind of bread that I can make, banana bread, pumpkin bread, like I just love it so much. 
and peanut butter, peanut butter sandwiches. I really like those too. Other than that, no real like crazy food cravings. I think that's kind of gonna be it. Definitely stay tuned for my next update because I will have the update on how my doctor's appointment went and how baby is measuring and looking. I'm sure I probably won't have much to report on unfortunately because I am so normal and healthy and I mean that's great but it doesn't make very riveting footage. <laughs> but I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how that goes and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!